In this tutorial I'm going to walk you through a pattern, so this is going to be for the Essential Crocheted Wrist Warmers which is part of the Paint Box Yarns Chunky Pops collection. So for this tutorial I'm going to use the Paint Box Yarns Chunky Pops and this is in the shade Sweet Dreams. Of course you can um, use a different yarn but just be aware that it might not come out exactly the same sizes as what we're working today. This particular yarn calls for a 6mm crochet hook. You'll also need a pair of scissors and a darning needle to tie off your ends and to sew the work together. You'll also need to download the free pattern for the Essential Crocheted Wrist Warmers. This is just from the Love Crochet website, I'll leave a link in the description box below. I've only printed off two pages of it but it does have some more details. This is all the details that we're going to need for today but I just thought this was a really nice way to talk you through the pattern so that you get used to reading patterns as well as creating your work. If you aren't too bothered about learning how to read a pattern I shall leave a timestamp in the description box below of where you can fast forward the video just to go straight to the wrist warmers tutorial. So what you'll notice when you download the pattern is that it will give you an indication of how easy or difficult the pattern is. This one is indicating that it's probably a little bit more advanced for somebody who is just beginning out to crochet. But I always like to think, you know, push your boundaries a little bit, see how far you can go with things. And on this first page, it's giving you all of the details that you need to know about the pattern. So it's giving you the sizes, the measurements of the actual pattern itself, so how big the wrist warmers will turn out. So it's saying here 19 centimeters, which is seven and a half inches around the hand, by 20 centimeters, which is seven and three quarter inches long. It's then telling you what you'll need for the pattern. So it's telling you that you'll need 200 grams of paint box chunky pots, which is actually how big these um, this yarn comes. So it comes in a ball of 200 grams. And it's telling you that the picture on the cover is using the feeling blue shade. But as I told you before, I'm using the shade Sweet Dreams. It's also telling you that you'll need a six millimeter crochet hook and it's giving you the conversions in the US there as well. Then it's giving you information on your tension or your gauge. So this is really important because it ensures that you're working to the same sizing as what the, the actual pattern should turn out like. So it's telling you how many stitch, stitches you should find over 10 centimeters or four inches. And then it's also telling you here that you may want to do a tension square before actually starting the work just to make sure that you are getting the right um, gauge to your work. So if, for example, your work measures larger than it should, then you can actually use a smaller crochet hook, or if it's measuring smaller than it should, then you can use a larger hook. So it's just saying to watch out for your tension because everybody is going to have slightly different tension. If you are newer to crochet, you'll probably find that your tension is much tighter than somebody who is a bit more relaxed with it because their hands are going to be more relaxed when they're actually um, performing the stitches. It's then giving you some details which are just extra little details. It's just telling you here that if you obviously use different yarn, that, which you can do, but if you use different yarn then be aware that it might not turn out to the si this size in. It's also telling you that um, quantities of yarn needed is approximate. Um, 200 gram balls is going to be plenty enough for a set of wrist warmers. This is also really important to look out for on patterns. It's telling you that it's in UK terms and it's also telling you that it's going to give you US terms which are going to be in brackets next to the stitch details. And it's also telling you here to repeat things which are in brackets which is obviously going to be different to what um, the stitch details is going to be. So just bear that in mind um, for later on. This is another important section of your patterns, you'll always get an abbreviation section. It might not always look like this, depending on the designer um, of the actual pattern itself, they might be slightly different, so always make sure that you've got this handy so that you can see what the abbreviations mean. 
So BEG equals beginning, CH equals chain, MM is millimetre, etc. This is one of the reasons why I designed my handy reference guide for crochet because it gives you the um, common abbreviations and it also tells you how to do the stitch as well. Some patterns will include instructions for the stitch but some patterns won't and this one um, doesn't. And then finally it's giving you details here of how your work is going to look once you've built it up. So we're going to build a long thin section and then uh, connect it together to make the wrist warmer. So now we have the actual pattern itself, which is a really fairly simple pattern um, to follow, which is one of the reasons why I chose this one. And you're just going to do exactly the same for each wrist warmer. So I've already made one up. I'm going to show you how I do the second one now. So the first lot of instructions here is to make 25 chains using a six millimeter crochet hook. You might also see next to this that um, on some patterns that it says foundation chain or something like that. But this is the basis that we're going to need in order to start the wrist warmers. So I'm now going to grab my yarn and my hook and I'll keep referring back to this so that we can work through the pattern. So as always, you want to begin by creating your slip knot and you can do this whichever way you prefer. Insert your hook and as the pattern's told us to do so, we're going to start by doing a chain of 25. So it's yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So I've done a chain four. Please go ahead and pause the video, work your chain of 25 and meet me back once you've done. So I've just done my chain 25. I'll point out at this point, this is a variegated yarn. So you can see that there is a color change happening here. And the color change is fairly sudden in this particular yarn rather than an ombre effect. So I'm just gonna grab the pattern again and we're going to work on row one and WS means wrong side. So that means that the wrong side is facing us. It says one double crochet, which is single crochet in the US, into the second chain from the hook. Okay, so we'll just do that now. So we don't um, count the, the chain that's here. We don't count this first chain. We're going to do a double crochet, which is single in the US, into this chain here. So we go straight into that chain with our hook, grab the yarn, pull it through. We'll have two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook. So that is the first step in that row one, which we've just done. Now what it says is to one double crochet, which is single crochet in, in the US, into each chain to the end and then turn. And it's telling you that at the end of this row, you'll have 24 stitches. So this row is really, really easy to do. All we're going to do is work our way along doing a double crochet into each of the chains along the foundation chain. And at the end of this row, you'll have 24 stitches. So go ahead, pause the video, work your way to the end of the chain and meet me back for our next row. So I'm now at the end of that row and this is what it's looking like. So that is our row one with the wrong side facing. So if we have a look at the pattern again, you'll notice that it says row one, wrong side, and then row one, RS, which is right side, and then it says row two again. But after this first set of row one, it says now work the pattern as follows. So with this pat particular pattern, it's giving you row one, row one again and row two. And the reason why it's done that is because we're going to repeat row one and two continuously. You may find in some patterns, however, that it will say row one, row two and row three. And then it could say repeat row two and three for so many rows. So just be aware that you're working your rows correctly. So it's saying now work the pattern as follows. So row one is right side facing. So we're going to start off with a chain four and it's letting you know that this chain four is going to count as your double treble, which is a treble in US terms. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Some people like to turn and chain. I personally like to chain and then turn. So we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four, and turn. 
And as I say, this is classing as a double treble stitch, which is treble in the US. It's then informing you to miss the double crochet, which is the single crochet at the base of the chain four. So that is referring to the stitches that we did in the last round. And then it's telling you to do one double treble into the next double crochet. So what that basically means is when we're working the chain four, sometimes a pattern will require you to work into the base of that chain, but this one doesn't. You're going to go straight into this next stitch and you're going to do a double treble. So the way that you do a double treble or a treble or triple that it's known in the US is yarn over twice, insert your hook into that next stitch, grab the yarn, pull it through, You'll have four loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two. You'll have three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two. You'll have two loops on the hook and then yarn over, pull through two loops. So this is how it's looking at the moment. So we've just done this one double treble into the next double crochet. So this next part of the pattern, you'll notice that you've got a little asterisk here and here and this is basically going to tell us to repeat what's in between that stitch. So after we've done this double treble it says miss one double crochet which means from the previous round and then do a double treble into each of the next three double crochets. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to miss one double crochet and then do three double trebles into the next stitches on the next three stitches so yarn over twice miss one double crochet and then do your double treble so this is our first one another double treble into the next stitch so that's our second one and then another double treble into the next stitch. Oops. So that is our third one. Now the next step of the pattern is where it can get a little bit more confusing if you're not used to reading patterns. But what I would always suggest that you do is if you're a bit unsure, take a look at the actual image of the pattern itself to see if you can work out what it means. So we've just done one double treble into the, each of the next three double crochets. Then it's telling you to do one double treble into the missed double crochet, enclosing the previous three double trebles in this stitch. So you might think, what on earth does that mean? So we've just missed a double crochet here, haven't we? So what we're actually going to do is yarn over twice, insert, so we're going to work our way backwards and insert our hook into that double treble and we're going to enclose those three trebles, double trebles, in this stitch. So you're going to grab the yarn from behind and pull it through and you'll notice it just squashes those stitches together. We're going to complete this stitch as normal, so grab the yarn, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two and then yarn over, pull through two and then when you just pull out the stitch you'll see that it's enclosed that stitch within those three double trebles. So if I just grab this here, you can see it a little bit better with these colours, it's enclosing those three double trebles into that last treble and that's what creates this effect here. So we'll go back to the pattern again. And it's just telling you to repeat the same thing from here to here. So we're going to go ahead and repeat that. So the instructions were to skip a double crochet. This is the last one we've just worked in, so just be mindful of that. You can see a stitch coming out there. We're going to skip this double crochet and we're going to do a double treble into this stitch here. So yarn over twice, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So that's our first double treble. We'll go again for our second.
and again for our third. And then we're going to trap those three double trebles in another double treble stitch. So we're going to yarn over twice, work our way back to that missed double crochet, go behind the work to grab the yarn and pull it back through that stitch. You'll have four loops on the hook, grab the yarn, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then you have your second of your cluster stitches just there. So it's just a matter of working your way all the way to the end of the work. So again, we're going to be mindful of where this last stitch was, skip the next double crochet, do three double trebles into those stitches and then work our way backwards. So feel free to rewind the video if you need instructions for them. But at this point, we want to see where this particular row is going to finish. So as it's saying here, repeat from here to here until you get to the last two double crochets. So at the end of this row, you should have two double crochets remaining once you've done a few clusters of these stitches. So go ahead, keep doing those stitches that we've just done until you have two double crochets left. I'll meet you back and show you how to finish off this row. So I'm now at the end of this row and I've got one, two, three, four, five of these clusters of stitches. And as the pattern said, I do have two stitches remaining in this row. And what it's telling you to do here is to do uh, one double treble into each of the last two stitches. Okay, so we are just going to do double treble into the second to last stitch. And then a double treble into the very last stitch of this row. And that is what your row should look like. So we, we almost have two um, double trebles here and then two double trebles at the end, which is correct. So now we're going to move on to the row two, which is what the pattern describes. And what it's saying is to one chain, so we're gonna chain one, and it's informing you that this does not count as a stitch. And you're going to do one double uh, crochet into each of the stitches to the end, working at the last double crochet into the top of the chain four at the beginning of the previous row. So, it might sound more complicated, but basically what it's saying is to chain one, turn the work, and then to work one double crochet into each of the stitches along this row. So you're simply going to do one stitch into every stitch. So go ahead, do that, work your way to the end and I'll show you what it means by um, doing the double crochet into the chain four at the end. So pause the video and meet me back in just a moment. So I've just come to the end of this row now and I'm left with the chain four from the previous row. So you're going to count up one, two, three, four chains from the bottom and do your last double crochet into that chain. And there we go. So let's have a look at the pattern again. Then it says to continue the pattern for a further 10 rows, ending with the wrong side row. So you're going to do row one and row two for a further 10 rows. So it's row one and row two five times. So I'm gonna get you started with row one again, and then I'll get you to pause the video and um, continue on. And you can rewind it for instructions if needed. So we're going to chain four, one, two, three, and four. Turn the work. We're not going to work into the base of here. We're going to do a double treble into the next stitch. We're going to skip a double crochet and do three double trebles into the next three stitches. One, two, 
and three and we're going to do a double treble into the skipped double crochet enclosing these three double trebles within that stitch so yarn over twice work our way backwards grab the yarn from behind and pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two so as I say you're going to repeat this a further five times so row one and row two is going to repeat it five times so pause the video work those ten rows in total and meet me back once you've built your work okay so this is what my work is looking like after I have finished all the rows we have our original foundation chain here our first row one and then the pattern started again so we did row one and row two and then I did a further ten rows so this is one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten and I have done what the pattern um, says or it fits with what the pattern says uh, because this last row is the row which is the wrong side facing you so what I'm going to do now is fasten off which is what the pattern tells me to do so I'm going to yarn over and pull through I'm going to grab my scissors and snip off the yarn and then pull that out so this is what I have I have a longer thinner piece of work and now it's going to give you instructions of how to make up the work excuse my little watermark here but it's saying do not steam press for each wrist warmer join the foundation chain edge to the top of the last row working to form a tube leave an opening in the seam for a thumb hole position the opening approximately four and a half centimeters which is one and a third inches down from the upper edge and making the opening approximately four centimeters long. Pin out the wrist warmers to measure measurements given and cover with a clean damp cloth to leave to naturally dry naturally. So I haven't actually done this last bit to my other wrist warmer yet um, but I can do that at a later time. So what it's basically telling you is to connect your foundation chain to the last uh, stitches that we've just done and it doesn't tell you whether to crochet it or to sew it. I'm going to choose to sew it um, just so I can miss out the thumb section. So first of all I'm going to tie in these ends and then I'm going to go ahead and sew them together and I'll just show you how I do that. So if you're going to choose to sew this up rather than crochet it together you are going to need to um, cut off some yarn and I would recommend that this piece of yarn is around three to four times the length of what you're going to need. So I've got mine ready here and I'm going to thread up my darning needle and I'm going to fold the work with the foundation chain up to the top and this is going to make the work be right sides facing each other and I'm just going to go ahead connect the yarn like so so I've just got a knot there and I'm just gonna work my way up this seam I'm going to grab my other wrist warmer so that I can take a look at where my thumb hole is. So if I just place it against here, I'm going to go ahead and make a mental note of where that finishes. So it's just around here somewhere. So I'm going to continue with this. So now I'm up to the section where the thumb hole is going to be, I'm simply going to weave the yarn in and out of one side of the work to just skip that section and then I'm just going to line it back up again and continue all the way to the end. So when I get to the end I'm just going to secure 
with a knot and then weave that end back in. I like to go um, backwards and forwards a few, couple of times just to make sure that it's fully secure and you only want to do this on one side rather than catching both sides. Snip off your yarn and turn it the right way out and there you have your wrist warmer. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and enjoyed following along with the pattern. I hope that it's helped you to understand patterns a little bit better. I would love to see your pictures so make sure that you tag me on social media. But if you like this video make sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe to keep up to date with all of my latest videos. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you again next time. Bye!